You need to catch on fire. You need to always be flammable for the Lord's use and the fire of the Holy Spirit to fall upon your life. Welcome to More on Christ. I'm Pastor Glenn Moore, where we're all about encouragement and everything. Well, it's all about Jesus, our Lord and Savior that promises abundant life. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. We thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We're in a brand new series called Onward Christian Soldiers. I love that song. I heard that song in Vacation Bible School, and I love that song. I thought, wow, this is a great song at 12 years old. Onward Christian Soldiers Marching as to War. Go with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the Royal Master leads against the foe. Forward into battle. See his banners go. And that's the truth. Well, we're in recruitment days. It's time to come to the altar and dedicate ourselves to God's blessings and the fire of God coming down upon our life. We have 65 days before an important day in America about our right to vote. So we need to really pray in the coming days. We want to thank you for tuning in from the Philippines, from India, from across the United States of America. God bless you this morning. Empty altars have no fire. Empty altars have no fire. The fire never falls on an empty altar. There must be a sacrifice, always. There's always a sacrifice. The sacrifice makes the difference. Now, we're in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7. You know, God says in the book of Hebrews 12, is a consuming fire. Well, the Lord woke me up the other morning and was sharing with me. He says, I am the fire. The bottom line is I am the fire. I am the fire. Wherever I show up, there's no contest. There are no other gods in contest with me. I am fire. Now, what is more powerful than fire? Nothing. In all of the world, that is wonderful. That's why at the altars, the fire is falling, and we're having times at the altar. People can be healed. People can be set free. Fire burns away the gravitational pull of sin that happens in this world. We're living in the world. We're not of it anymore. We've been given a brand new heart. We are new creations. We no longer the way we used to be. We no longer practice sin. We now practice righteousness. We've been freed from sin. So the bottom line is God is fire. He has everything under control. Now, why does this matter? Well, the reason it matters is this simply. America is now in darkness. The altars have been removed, and this is going on 50 years. The decline, the darkness began in 1962 when did all this take place? Well, 1962, prayer was removed from the schools. 1963, Bible reading was stopped. 1973, the abortion was legalized. And in 1980, the Ten Commandments were removed. That was our safekeeping. Now, you might think, oh, no, that doesn't make a difference. Well, you're not looking at it correctly because we have to recognize the season that we are in. When we remove the restraints, the things that keep us sanctified, separated and set free from the kingdoms of darkness, we're in better shape. But once we begin to do things God is not pleased with, the abortion industry started, over 60 million souls dead. Now that's innocent blood, no matter how you deal with that. And if you read throughout scripture and Proverbs, you'll read all these passages that God hates shedding of innocent blood. And God will avenge it. So there is a reckoning date coming for any nation that participates in shedding of innocent blood. Now, that's in the Bible. So you'd have to do a lot of research. That's a whole other sermon series. But God will avenge all of those. You can just look to Adam, his two sons, Cain slew Abel. And the innocent blood of Abel cried out to God. And God said, I'll deal with it. So God always deals with this in time. But it doesn't take, he doesn't wait forever. And so now we look, we need a great awakening. We need to pray for God to do something unique. You can help at your family altar. You can help 
in the privacy of your prayer chamber as you seek God. God, bring a revival. Lord, bring a great awakening right here where I live, in my street, Lord, in my apartment building, wherever I dwell, wherever you dwell. God, use me to touch somebody in this world. Hallelujah. Now at New Life Church, the fire is falling. And we're having the most exciting time. Just God do what you want to do. And we'll just step out of the way, Lord. Have your way, Lord, and make us like Jesus. It's so exciting to see what God does every Sunday. It's amazing what we watch happen. So we just step aside and say, Lord, let the fire fall because the sacrifices, well, they're on the altar. People come and say, Lord, here's my life. Now, that's called a living sacrifice. Paul talked about that in Romans 12, 1. So a living sacrifice, Lord, you can have my life. And let the fire fall on my heart and remove all the impurities, Lord. Remove everything that is not pleasing to you and mold me and make me and shape me and make me just like Jesus. That I can be loving when I don't feel like being loving. That I can praise you all through the day, a sacrifice of praise, and give thanks to you at all times, O oh Lord. Touch me, use me. Let the fire fall, Lord, and do great things in my life. Now, God's fire falls on hungry hearts. God's fire falls on thirsty, hunger and thirsty for righteousness. Thirst for righteousness. Now, I can't do that for you. Nobody else can do that for you. You have to be the one to hunger for more of God and cry out, Oh, Lord, give me more. I want more. Fire is lit on a lamp that has oil. Where there's no oil in the lamp, there'll be no fire. It's simple as that. So that's why we have the parable of the ten virgins. Five foolish, five wise. The five wise go in the rapture, the five foolish stay for the whatever's left over, 21 judgments. And don't take the mark of the beast no matter what happens in life. Never take that mark. There's always hope. But once you take the mark, that's it. There is no redemption for that. So God says, read the book. The blessings are in the book. The ones that read the book of Revelation, they're blessed when they read it and say, oh, I want to be like this. So the fire, God is fire. When you look in Revelation 1, you see Jesus in it. And the way John describes Jesus, that he is bright and shining. Well, that's fire. When you think about the new Jerusalem, it does not have a sun. It is lit up by God's glory and his light and his, well, God is fire. He's all powerful. He's all energy. That's God. And you and I, we get to have a relationship with him. We get to. You don't have to. You get to. We get to serve the Lord. We get to worship God. We get to read his book. We get to pray. We get to serve him and his people in the local church. We get to do that. What a great privilege that is when so many neglect that opportunity. Well, Solomon in Second Chronicles, it's an amazing book. In the first chapter, Solomon has an encounter with God. And God says, what would, I, what would you like for me to do for you? And Solomon is very smart. He says, well, I, I need wisdom because I, I just can't be a good king without wisdom. And God says, for that you will have and a lot more. And, and he talks about what his responsibilities are. Well, the first thing in chapter one is that he goes to the tent of meetings, the tabernacle that Moses built, and he worships God there and he sacrifices God animals there on the altar and then we go to chapter two and God talks about things in chapter two about what he needs to do fire falls on the altars that are that have sacrifices in chapter two verse two now watch so Solomon said well we got to build a temple for God a permanent temple it was completed in 957 but it was destroyed in 587 because the people of God did not keep the fire on the altar. The fire must stay on the altar at all times. It must stay lit. In our life, the fire must stay on the altar of our hearts at all times. It must burn bright. We must always be giving the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of worship. We must always pray, God, let the fire burn. And God says, bring the sacrifice. And oh, we have the privilege to do that. We get to do that every day of our life to bring the sacrifice of praise. So Solomon selected in chapter 2, verse 2, 70,000 men to bear burdens, 
80,000 to Corey Stone in the mountains and 3,600 to oversee this building of this great temple. He wanted skilled men to work. He didn't want, well, I don't have any skills, but I'll sure help out. Nope, nope, we need skilled men to do this amazing work. Second Chronicles 5, they bring the Ark of the Covenant that now had been with Israel for 400 years since they left Egypt. They bring the Ark that Moses had built that was the tent of meetings in the wilderness. Now, when they erected the tent, it was at the very center where all the tribes pitched their tents around the great tent of meeting. And the pillar of fire was there at night. And the people could see and they could move about the camp because there was a light in their midst. You know, we need the light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path in this dark world. That's why we need the light and the fire of God upon our hearts to illuminate the word of God so that we go this way, do this, go here, obey this, follow this way, speak to so-and-so. These are the things that the fire on the altar will demonstrate to us and show us what to do. Now in 2 Chronicles 5.13, they bring the ark in and they begin to sing. For he is good for his mercy endures forever that the house of the Lord was filled with such a cloud so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Now they bring in the ark into the new building. And in chapter 6, Solomon prays a prayer that lasts from verse 12 to verse 42. 30 verses in this dedication of the temple and renewal of the covenant. And all of the sacrifices, I mean the altar was just full of sacrifices. And this went on for seven days. There the priests were, then the power and the glory of God was there, and they couldn't minister. They had to stop. It was so powerful. God's presence was in the new place. There was a dedication going on. So 2 Chronicles chapter 7. In 7, we pick it up, and it kind of gives us a picture of what's taking place. Now, I've heard this preached on many times, 2 Chronicles 7, but the focus is always on verse 14. Now, that's true. We need to focus on that. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and repent of their sins, call upon my name, I will heal their land. We need that. Oh, that's absolutely true. We want to be in a right relationship with God. We want his blessings. We want his favor. You know, sometimes it's easier to know the sins of your best friend than your own personal sins. You know, taking notes for the sermon, but you're really writing maybe some, okay, here's some, here, you need to work on this. That's how we think sometimes. We need to think about, Lord, work on me. You have a list for me. Let me get my list for me. And Lord, let the fire fall on me and burn out my impurities. I don't need to worry about my neighbor's impurities. I don't need to worry about across the street. I need to worry about me in my prayer closet. Lord, sanctify me. Set me apart. Make me the way you want me to be. Make me just like Jesus. So it says in 2 Chronicles 7, now here it is. This is what's great. Watch this. This is very important. When Solomon had finished praying, so 30 verses in the previous chapter of his prayer. And he was always praying, God, if we sin and go away and we come back to this place, forgive us as we repent of our sins. And he says that about seven times. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the Shekinah glory and brilliance of the Lord filled the house. The priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory and brilliance of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the people of Israel saw how the fire came down and saw the glory and brilliance of the Lord upon the house, wow, they were just excited. They bowed down on the stone pavement with their faces to the ground and they worshiped and praised God, saying, For he is good, for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Now you can imagine that they dedicated this temple. There was a day, this was a festival, and everybody in Israel knew to come. We got to go. Now that's what festivals did. People came to the festivals to renew the covenant, make sure everything was okay. We are worshiping God, not idols. And that's why he wanted them to come to the tent of meetings, to renew the vows that we make to God. Now, that's why we do that. Well, can you imagine that the young people are saying, well, what is it all about? And the older people begin to tell the stories about when God brought the people of Israel out of Egypt and how God used fire 
to hold back the Egyptian army long enough for Israel to cross through the Red Sea on dry land. And when it was over with, God said, have at it. And then he closed the sea upon the Egyptians, destroyed their whole army. Because 80 years earlier, they destroyed the young children of Israel. They shed innocent blood. There's that theme about innocent blood again. God will always judge it. And we all need to repent of that in this nation. Pray about that. God, help us, God. We repent. We repent. One day the Lord spoke to me and said, well, what are you doing about all this shedding of innocent blood and abortion? I said, well, what do you, what do you want me to do, Lord? You want me to go and pick it? You want me to go stand in front of it? Whatever you want me to do, I will do. He said, no, I want you to pray. I want you to pray about it every day. I want you to pray and seek my face. I said, I can do that, Lord. And so we began to pray here for many years, many years. Lord, defund planned parenthood. And that's exactly what we kept praying. Now, I didn't know what would happen, but I know that my prayers are being heard. Well, we know what has happened. God has stepped in, and abortion is now illegal in America. That's what God has done, and that's what God wants. And he looks for people to come to the altar and say, God, we need help. God, give us a great awakening. We need a great awakening in America. The world is in darkness now. God wants to do something great. These could be the greatest days of the church as we come to a time when the church will celebrate 2,000 years. Let the fire fall on the altars of the church, just like the fire fell here on Solomon's altar at the new temple. God is the fire. He's an all-consuming fire. Fire falls many times throughout the Old Testament, through the New Testament. It fell on Gideon's sacrifice. It fell on David's sacrifice. It was there at the tent of meetings all, every night. The fire, a big pillar of fire. People could look and say, wow. So they told that story from generation to generation. And they said, well, uh, today's going to be an exciting day when, when we dedicate this temple. This is going to be awesome. And the Ark of the Covenant will be moved into a new dwelling place a permanence. Now that took 400 years by the time they left Egypt to the time they put that new temple up under Solomon, David's son, 400 years. They spent 400 years in Egypt. So we have these increments of 2,000 years to the flood, 2,000 years from the flood to Jesus. And we have 400 years from the time the temple was built until 587 when God said, listen, your altars will no longer have any sacrifice. You're serving other gods. You're intermingling with the people around you. That's why I had the commander Joshua to go into Canaan and to remove all of those people, those 30-some kingdoms. They shed innocent blood. They had their firstborn children sacrificed in the fires of Molech and Baal. Innocent blood was shed crying out to God, and God avenged that. God always does that. So we want to keep fire on the altars of our heart. Oh, let God ignite the fire in America once again. We need to pray and renew our covenant with God. Say, God, let the fire fall. We want to see it fall. And it said all the people were like, wow, look at that. Now, can you imagine being there on that day with your family and seeing this fire and hearing it? The sound of it, the force of it. I mean, this is an amazing thing from heaven. Uh, it, it, this is off the charts, and it doesn't stop. It's not on a budget. God can let that fire go as long as he wants, just like in the tent of meetings in the wilderness, the pillar of fire all through the night. Every night, every night, God set it up. God lets fire fall on the altar. Elijah prayed, and fire fell on the altar. Fire fell on the altar when Elijah prayed. And God dealt with the false prophets of Baal that day. God dealt with them. God always wants to bring a righteous standard. So, Lord, let fire fall on my altar. Let my sacrifices be there. And let us praise God with the sacrifice of praise and the sacrifice of thanksgiving. So what are you bringing to the Lord today? Are you praising God and say, thank you, Lord? I want the sacrifice of praise and the sacrifice of thanksgiving to be upon our altar. It says, then the king... And all the people offered a sacrifice before the Lord. Now think about this sacrifice. This is amazing. That's why it took seven days. 
So we need some seven-day situations in the church. We need a fire week in the church where we come together every night and seek after God. We hunger for God. This is a fire conference right here. The fire is falling on the altar in the new temple. There's a fire coming down. Listen to what it says. Then the king and all the people offered a sacrifice before the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of one oxen and one sheep. No, nope, he did not. No, 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 no. This was a brand new temple. It's a new day in Israel. He offered 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. Now that's going to take a lot of time to offer that. And God's calling those sheep and oxen, it's time to come home. We've got better things for you to do. It's time to come home. And they became, they became the sacrifice. God wants us to be the living sacrifice. And sometimes we as Christians become martyrs. But we get to go home to Jesus and be with him forever. And God will honor us as we serve him on this earth. So it's a sacrifice. And the, and the worship team starts up. Oh, the worship team. The priests stood at their post ready for service, and the Levites also with the musical instruments of the Lord which King David had made to praise the Lord, saying, For his loving kindness and mercy endure forever. Whenever David offered praise through their ministry, the priests were there, and they blew the horns, and they were all in one accord, on one beat. They were all worshiping God. In this new place, all of Israel was there to celebrate this great day. Now the church needs to come together and be one. We need to have churches. All of our churches need to have an altar where people bring their sacrifices, bring their hearts, and say, God, I pray let the fire fall on me and burn out all of the impurities of my life. You know, Jesus gave us that wonderful prayer. He says, and forgive us our trespasses. We need some fire sometimes to burn out some memories, some frustration, some tension, some striving. We need some of that fire to come and burn out that stuff and say, let the fire come because I want to be forgiven of all my sins. Lord, he said, well, we got to work on the other stuff. I'll bring the fire. I'll bring the fire and we'll deal with it and we'll renew our covenant and we'll just get a fresh new start. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We can be healed, set free. We can come to the altars of God and let the altars be on fire in your church. Let the altars be on fire. Let the fire come and be setting on the altars and draw us in from wherever we're at. So they, they begin to have a feast of dedication that lasted seven days. And on the eighth day, they sent them home. Wow, seven days. We have a struggle just coming for an hour and a half to church. We're going to increase our service to two hours because we need more time. When people want to talk about what happened to me at the altar, we want to hear their stories because those are some of the greatest sermons you'll ever hear because they come straight from the heart of a person that's been renewed and set free from their sins, their pain, their misery, the hurt in their life, the abuse of the past, drug addiction. They can talk about Jesus did it. I couldn't get it done. I, no matter what I did, nothing would happen. But I came here and Jesus set me free. You know, Jesus was the fire moving. He was the great light moving for three and a half years among the people of Israel. And he had 12 great apostles that they carried the torch. He passed the baton and they went out and set the world on fire. God wants people to set the world on fire. And we're going to be celebrating 21 days from October the 17th to November the 7th. And we've got 65 days before that day arrives on November the 8th. We also have 70 days before one day to feed the world. And we're going to celebrate that. And we're going to bring one day's pay to help feed the world. So we're going to do that. So God has a great agenda before us. But the alarm bells are going off now and we should be hearing them in the spirit. God's telling me something. God says the world is dark. Pray for a great awakening. Pray for a revival. Pray for the fire to fall on the family altar. Pray for the fire to fall on the church altars all the time. You know, when the fire is falling, people don't do this. You know, people are going, oh, Lord, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall on me. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? We need to see that. You know, we're going to be spending forever and ever and ever. Let's tell the great stories of the fire falling on the altar at your church. 
We want to hear about that. I tell you, it's exciting to see the fire hit people and the look on their face and the feeling afterwards and the celebration and the praise. It is wonderful. So, so this is a time of renewing the covenant. This is a time of dedicating yourself to the next 65 days of seeking God and hungering and thirsting for God. Now, God gives us promises in the book. He gives us warnings. And then he comes to Solomon a second time in chapter 7. So in chapter 1 of 2 Chronicles, he comes, he says, what, what, what do you want from me? I need wisdom. Got it. You have it. I'll give you riches <laughs> because you put the right priority. And then he visits Solomon after verse 14. He says, I've seen what you've done, and this is my place. I'm going to honor it. And when people come to the temple, I'll hear their prayers. Well, now, guess what? When you accept Jesus as your Savior, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple. That is why your heart is the altar. And there should always be a renewing of your heart. That's why we have daily devotions. That's why we read God's Word, Proverbs 4 today. Reading it and letting it touch our life and and ignite. The fire ignites this Word. It convicts us. You need to be doing that. You're not doing that. Yesterday, Proverbs 3, bring first fruits to my house. Bring first fruits and honor me, which means to give glory to God. It's God that gives us the health that we can come to his house. We get to come. We don't have to come. You don't have to do anything. You can do anything you want, but there's a day coming you'll wish you had done everything God wanted. So we get to serve the Lord and give him glory and come to his altars and let the fire hit us and change us in an instant. When all the help of all of our friends and all the therapy and everything that we could do and all the, the good programs, do this, do that, didn't help. But God sends fire in an instant and it takes place. Now, John G. Lake, a great healing evangelist about 100 years, over 100 years ago, he said this. Men tell us in these days that sin is what you think it is. Well, it is not. Sin is what God thinks it is. And that's exactly true. You may think according to your own conscience, but God thinks according to his, his will and his dictates. The fire on the altar must still burn. Why? Why doesn't fire need to be burned? In the tent of meetings, God said, don't let the fire go out. So when they put the sacrifices on it, it would be on there all night. Keep the fire going. Why? Because the sacrifice must be consumed. So the next morning, the priest would come in and take the ashes to a designated place outside of the camp and bury them. But keep the fire burning because we're going to do more burnt offerings of the morning and of the evening. So the priest had quite a job. They had a big job to take care of, make sure this this tent of meetings operates correctly. Bring the sacrifices, people. And they'd bring their sacrifices for forgiveness and other things in their life. That's that's another sermon series altogether. But fire is God. He is an all-consuming fire, Hebrews 12. Fire falls on our sacrifices. When you give something to God, fire is going to fall and do great things. It's going to be, so bring your sacrifice. What, what, What do I need to bring? Besides money, God's saying, bring yourself. Give yourself to me. Serve me in my church, my local church. God is looking for hearts that will worship in spirit and truth. Jesus said that to the woman at the the well in John chapter 4. And the fire that is burning throughout the night makes a sweet aroma from the sacrifice, a sweet aroma that comes up before God's nostrils as a sweet savor. Now, God is pleased with that. God says, well, they're doing everything I want them to do, and I'm going to bless them. And they had lots of enemies. They were surrounded by enemies which is going to happen again, and it's happening right now. But anybody that would look at that camp and see that great pillar of fire would go, let's just go home. Best to go home. We don't have a chance against that. That's a God. He's an all-consuming fire. And it talks about that. God said to Joshua, I'll go before you, and I'll just remove the people, because I'm an all-consuming fire. I am the fire. I am the weapon, and I'll do what is necessary. So that is why we need to keep the fire going. Onward Christian Soldiers is the series. It's time to recruit. It's time to give our life and say, God, I'm going to seek your face. The next 65 days of my life is going to be different. There's going to be fire on my altar. No matter what happens in this world, Lord, I'm going to be on fire for you. 
I'm going to serve you with all my heart. Now God says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer offered in the house of the Lord. For now I have chosen and sanctified and set you apart for my purpose. Now that's all of us. God send that to you right now. This house that my name is on, to all the local churches, God says, I'm setting you apart for my purpose. I want to use you. I want to set the communities on fire. Go into your prayer closet. And when you pray in secret, I'm going to reward you in the open. And bring me those seven names, not your family members. You can bring them too. But bring those seven names of peoples. Yo, I don't know all my neighbors, Lord. Well, you know the house number. Pray for the house number. Oh, Lord, on house Number 1682. I don't know those people, Lord, but I know you can give me an opportunity to share my testimony about what Jesus has done for me. I'm available. I'm going to start praying, God, and I'm going to watch you put this together because you have to do it, Lord, and I'll do it. Make me bold. Make me like Jesus. I want to be a witness just like Jesus was at the woman at the well. He was there. Magnificent the way. And the whole community was changed because the fire of God was there. That's why. So God wants us to be just like him, just like Jesus. He wants to change our lives. So the main to-do application today is just come and let God, let the fire fall on you. Say, Lord, I want the fire. Bring the fire into my life, Lord. I'm going to begin to seek you. Wake me up in the morning, and Lord, I'll get up and meet with you in, the, in my tent of meetings. I'll meet with you in the secret place. I'll seek you. I'll hunger for you. I'll read your word, Lord. And I'll do what you tell me to do, Lord. Just show me, and I'll do it. Father, we thank you today for your many blessings in our life. And Lord, if there's someone here that has not accepted Jesus, we pray right now that they will come to know Jesus. You've done things your ways, my way. God says, no, it's my way. If you really want my blessings and my favor, let's do it my way. My way works better. I have many resources. I can wipe away all of your sins because I sent Jesus and he went to the cross, he shed his blood, and he removed all the sins. But you have to repent of your sins and be forgiven of your sins. And all your sins will be washed away, never to be remembered. So today, B, I believe that God sent Jesus. I believe you, Lord. And C means I choose Jesus as my Savior and Lord. And I promise to serve you every day of my life for the rest of my life. I promise to be a part of the local church. I will not be a wall. I'll be right there serving you all the time. This I promise in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and may the fire fall on your home and upon your church around the world. And may we have a great awakening in these last days before Jesus comes for his church. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.